I had failed every New Year's resolution I'd ever made, but in 2022, I was finally able to make it happen by making three big changes to my approach. And in today's video, I'm gonna go over those major changes as well as my yearly review template. Keep in mind that this is just what worked for me and I thought I'd share it in case it worked for you as well. The first major change was to rethink how I approach habits. What really helped me was to not care at all about streaks, but rather percentages. In previous years, I would build a streak for let's say walking 10,000 steps every day and I would commit to it for like 20 days or so. And then because of a couple of days that I missed, my streak was ruined and it was super demotivating. And if you think about it, the good habits that you do have were probably not built by committing to a streak for an arbitrary amount of days. It's not like we're gonna reach the arbitrary number and flip a switch and now that habit is internalized. Sustainable habits are not built in a straight line, but rather in ups and downs, which is normal and healthy. So instead I focus on percentages. So for instance, let's go back to my previous goal where I wanted to walk 10,000 steps every day. The way I approached it was to instead set a goal to walk an average of 10K steps a day. So some days I'll walk six, five or even 4K, but then other days I'll walk 12 or 13K. And some weeks, I didn't get an average of 10K at all, especially in the beginning, which is totally fine. In fact, for the first half of 2022, there were very few weeks where I actually met that goal, but I did get progressively closer. And it helps a lot to think that you're building a habit not just for this year, but for the foreseeable future. So it needs to be sustainable, which means you need to be flexible. The important part is to accept those ups and downs and only focus on the long-term trajectory of that habit. The second change was to focus on what I can control. Let's use this YouTube channel as an example. There's no use for me to set a goal of getting X amount of subscribers or X amount of monthly views. Those things are out of my control. What is in my control though, is how often I upload, how good my content is, thumbnails and all that. So instead of setting an arbitrary metric as a goal, such as views or subscribers, a much better approach is something like sticking to an upload schedule, practice my speaking, my thumbnails, etc. And the same applies to a lot of different areas. So if you have a traditional job, having the goal of getting promoted is not really practical. A much better way of approaching it is to focus on something that's in your control that could lead to getting promoted, such as being more proactive or taking more initiative. The last and perhaps most important change is to review the previous yearly review on a monthly basis. If you already have the habit of writing a monthly note, then this is a no-brainer. All of my monthly notes have that year's goal section embedded in them for me to see whether or not I'm on track. If I am, good, let's keep going. But if I'm not, then what do I need to change? Maybe I'm spending too much time on one thing, or maybe sometimes I just need to be reminded of what my priorities are. All right, so now let's go over my yearly review template and I did this in Obsidian as it is my app of choice. And if you wanna learn more about Obsidian, I have dozens of videos on it. So the plugin I use for all of my journaling needs is the Periodic Notes plugin, which lets me take daily, weekly, all the way to yearly notes and it organizes them in my journaling folder. I made a video on it and you can find it in the screen right here as well as in the description below. Once you have it installed, you can just come here to the plugin settings and then you just toggle on the yearly notes. I like to leave the format as is. And then if you already have a template, you can just specify it here. And lastly, you need to tell the plugin where to place the new notes. And I like to place my yearly notes under journal slash yearly. And then I'm gonna close out of this, go to command palette and periodic notes, open yearly note. And because I'm filming this in January 1st, it's picking up that it's 2023. So it's giving me the 2023 one, but we want 2022. All right, so here's my yearly note template. And as you can see, it's nothing fancy. It just consists of some headers with the two main ones being one for reflection and another for resolution. And I don't really care if I write a lot here as the whole point is to reflect and I'm only gonna revisit the reflection if I want to, which usually happens out of curiosity or when I'm doing the following year's annual review. Whereas for the resolution part, because I know it'll be embedded in my monthly notes, I want it to be as short and concise as possible. All right, so the first subheader I have here is what happened this year worth remembering. And this part is actually already done for me because I take monthly notes and anything worth remembering for me will probably already be in those notes. And as you can see, every month is pre-linked to that month's notes. So if I press on it, it'll take me to January, 2022. And you can do this very easily with Templater. And if you wanna learn more about Templater, feel free to check out my video on it. And all I really do here is quickly open each month and see what was worth remembering and just copy and paste it here. You can also automate this process via Templater, but I prefer to do it manually since I want to pick and choose which things are worth remembering on a yearly perspective and not a monthly one. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I take notes on a lot of different types of content such as videos, articles, tweets, and I import them into Obsidian. But I also keep a running tab of my favorites on a monthly basis through my monthly note. So the way I have this set up is if I find a good piece of content, I'll take notes on it and import it into Obsidian. But if it's a great piece of content, I'll also add it to my monthly favorites for that particular month. And then the best for the entire year goes right here under content in my yearly note. And I do the same for new hardware and new software that I find. So when the yearly review comes, it's just a matter of linking since all of those already live in my Obsidian vault under different folders. I use Readwise to import articles, tweets, and even YouTube videos now that Readwise's reader supports it. I also make use of different plugins to import other sources of media such as podcasts, books, movies, and TV shows. And I'm gonna link to them in the description below. 
If I buy a great product that made a difference in my life, I also add it here as well as different software. And this year, I'm going to start sharing my monthly favorites via my free newsletter that I just created. Another big thing in my annual review is to go over what it is that I learned this year. I'm always taking a bunch of online courses and I take my notes on them in Obsidian under the courses folder. There were three great courses I took this year. One was from Casey Neistat and the other two were from Ali Abdal. One was the part-time YouTubers Academy and the other one was Camera Confidence. Another great source that I learned from is through the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that offers bite-sized interactive lessons geared towards the maths and sciences. Brilliant's approach is super engaging, so important and difficult concepts are broken down into understandable parts. That's what makes STEM topics actually stick. If you want to get started in computer science, I highly recommend Brilliant's Computer Science Fundamentals course. It's a great way to visually understand how computers work and how they process information, which in turn helps you understand how programming languages function. Throughout 2022, I use Brilliant on a nearly daily basis, and because Brilliant has exclusive new content added monthly, there's always something new to learn. Learning a little every day has a huge impact, and it's really fulfilling to reflect on the year and see how much I've learned by simply doing it a little every day on my downtime. Get started for free today by visiting brilliant.org slash from Sergio, and the first 200 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, so this next section is habits. And the first subheader here, which says what habits do I have that I'm not happy with, I actually feel this throughout the year. So every time throughout the year that I notice I have a bad habit, such as bad posture, I tend to put it here and in the resolution part of the note, that's when I decide which ones I'm going to tackle for next year. And next up we have how did I do on my current habits. And I made a video on how I track my habits in Obsidian, which makes extended use of the Obsidian Tracker plugin. And because my habits are tracked in Obsidian, I can just make a query to see how I did during the year on certain habits. So if I want to see how my weight fluctuated for the whole year, I can just come into my weight tracker. I can copy and paste this whole query. I can paste it here and then I can just add start date and end date. And then when I go into preview mode, if this was populated, you'd see the line graph throughout the whole year. I can also add the summary to see my average at a glance. So I'll just grab this block right here, paste it here, and I would add the same start and end date over here. And if this was all populated, I would then see my stats here in the summary. For different habits that you're tracking, other visualizations make more sense. So for habits that are just a yes or no, like meditation, I just have a summary query that tells me how often I meditated. And this here, new habits that I want to achieve for next year, I use the same approach as what habits do I have now that I'm not happy with. Every time throughout the year that I think of something that would be beneficial to me or healthy, I add it here and then on my new year's resolution, I choose which ones I'm going to commit to. All right, so this last one here is relationships and I self-host a service called Monica CRM, which is a CRM like Salesforce, but for personal relationships. I use Monica CRM to log when I meet new people, when I hang out with them and so much more. And the whole point of doing that is not just to reflect on how often I met with the people I care about, but also to have alerts from Monica coming in that I haven't reached out to certain people in X amount of time. So it helps me to strengthen my relationships and it's honestly done wonders for me because I tend to be so focused on work that I neglect what I shouldn't be neglecting. I've been thinking of migrating it over to Obsidian, so if you'd like to see a video on it, let me know in the comments. And then over here I have the work section, which is just a place for me to reflect on my career, what I did during the year to improve it, what relationships I made, as well as my overall successes and failures. All right, so then finally I have my resolution. And this is the part where I'm much more careful with because this is the one that will be embedded on all of my monthly notes. And I found that the more that I write here, the more overwhelmed I get. And I like to think of my resolutions bit by bit throughout the year in an effortless way, especially in the second half of the year. So whenever an idea pops up for what I want to do next year, I just type it here. Kind of like a really long term to do list. Then when the time comes, I decide which ones to commit to. And it's fine if I only commit to a few big ones because that's the whole point of it. And as you can see, resolution has a lot of the same headers as reflection, because all I want from resolution is to tell myself how I'll improve on each of the headers I just reflected on. So then over here, I like to be really short and concise. So what are my good habits, bad habits to eliminate, then in relationships, is there people I want to reach out to more, maybe get in the habit of making a quick phone call instead of texting for birthdays. And I place it all here. And then for learning, anything specific I want to learn and improve at, it all goes here. And I do the same for work. Ideally, the resolution is a really small part of the whole yearly note, just a couple of bullet points. I normally don't have more than three big goals for the whole year. I can have a few small ones, but for the big ones, even three is a lot. I think we all make the mistake of overestimating how much we're going to accomplish next year, so I try to be realistic with my goals because it feels a lot better to underpromise and overdeliver than overpromising and underdelivering, even if it is to yourself. Finally, I just want to wish you guys a very happy new year. Thanks for all the support, it's super appreciated. Have a great one, and I'll see you in the next video.